But after all, I'm a Muslim. Do you know what he says about us? Please. Well, you said one time in an interview that there, and just recently, that there's a, there's a, I think you said on O'Reilly actually, there's a Muslim problem right. in this world. What, what do you mean by that exactly? Well, Bill O'Reilly asked me, is there a Muslim problem? And I said, absolutely yes. Is there a Muslim problem? And I said, absolutely yes. Mr. Trump, although I disagree with your hair, but on this issue, I agree with you 100%. Yes, we have Muslim problem in this country. If this is not a Muslim problem, then what is this? This is Germany. <laughs> Look at this. This is Britain. Extremist group are in breach of anti-terror laws. The leaflets are believed to have been distributed by radical students looking to gain support for the Islamic State, formerly known as ISIS, which is fighting a brutal war to control areas of Syria and Iraq. Now, this is a copy of one of those. Now, in it, it makes recommendations for Muslim men. Among those are migrating from the UK to the Caliphate and obeying the leader of the Islamic State. <laughs> We are here merely saying to you, look, there's a better way of life. You do not need, need to live like animals, following your own desires. The big industries you see nowadays in the West are things like gambling, pornography, alcohol, drugs, you know, homosexuality. If, well, you, took mankind, over, if you took over Britain, you'd ban alcohol. Of course, alcohol will be banned, drugs will be banned, pornography will be banned, gambling will be banned. But the, the money saved the queen? that we don't want to keep planning uh, any kind of operations. If we were doing so, you would not see us out of the public. But that does not mean that we do not believe in the eradication of man-made law and supremacy and sovereignty only for God. And the way the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, eradicated the non-Islamic law from the Arabian Peninsula, we hope one day to eradicate the Islamic law from Britain or with the generations to come from the rest of the world to fulfill the prophecy of the Prophet that the whole of the world will one day be under the authority of the Muslims. First of all, I believe that the British people, uh, they are very ignorant of, about the fact what is happening abroad, even about Sheikh Osama. If they came to actually verify with us rather than show an ugly face and be angry with us. You may ask where they were incubated. I am telling you, in those local mosques, behind your homes. No, I am not saying that all the mosques produce these people. And I am not saying that all clerics are doing this kind of job. We have good mosques and bad mosques. But the thing is, we are not monitoring the mosques. We don't know which one is the good one to be rewarded and which one is the devil one to be punished. Yes, Mr. Trump, we have Muslim problem. Not only in America, but in Europe and all over the world. I'm not sure even if you know the depth of this problem. I do. I'm a Muslim scholar. I studied Quran for 12 years. I studied the history of Islam. And since I was 17, I was involved in the politics of Afghanistan. I was even imprisoned for five years during the Russians. Always since 17 years old, I was involved in the politics of Afghanistan which covers the big part of the politics of Islam. I am an expert. I know the depth of this problem. This is ocean deep. Donald Trump, at this moment, I tell you, at least 90% of Muslims, they are against you. Because we don't want anyone to say we have a Muslim problem. But deep inside, even we know, 90% of us, we know that we have a Muslim problem. Let's be clear, though. Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. The obsession in some quarters with a clash of civilization or repeating the specific words radical Islamic terrorism isn't just a distraction. It gives these criminals, these murderers, it gives these criminals, these murderers, it gives these criminals, these murderers, 
more standing than they deserve. It actually plays into their hands by alienating partners we need by our side. We love to listen to Mr. Obama. We cannot turn against one another by letting this fight be defined as a war between America and Islam. That too is what groups like ISIL want. That too is what groups like ISIL want. That too is what groups like ISIL want. ISIL does not speak for Islam. They are thugs and killers. ISIL does not speak for Islam. They are thugs and killers, part of a cult of death. And they account for a tiny fraction of a more than a billion Muslims around the world, including millions of patriotic Muslim Americans who reject their hateful ideology. Moreover, the vast majority of terrorist victims around the world are Muslim. If we're to succeed in defeating terrorism, we must enlist Muslim communities as some of our strongest allies, rather than push them away through suspicion and hate. But what is the difference, according to Ms. Clinton and Mr. Obama, is still there is two categories of Muslims, a majority of good Muslims, a minority of bad. We have to go after the bad ones. In the case of Mr. Trump, it's the same thing. He says we have a Muslim problem, but then he explains himself. Riley, actually, there's a Muslim problem right. in this world. Riley, actually, there's a Muslim problem right. in this world. Boy, many, many, most Muslims are wonderful people. Boy, many, many, most Muslims are wonderful people. Miss Clinton, you're the only one in this presidential election that I know about. I did some researches. I love, I respect, and I admire you. You're the best for me, but I cannot vote for you. Too soft. What you say, George Bush said 15 years ago, but it didn't work. Please listen. That's not what Islam is all about. Islam is peace. That's not what Islam is all about. Islam is peace. These terrorists don't represent peace. They represent evil in war. Mr. Obama, I deeply appreciate your kind heart. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make sure that we are not being discriminated against. But looking at two terms of your policy, foreign policy, what you did supported these extremists. For example, in Afghanistan, you spent hundreds of millions of dollars on Karzai and Ashraf Ghani. This country is spent billions of dollars in Afghanistan just to tell people to prove for them that democracy is the best way. But then your government is spent hundreds of millions of dollars in Afghanistan to help Ashraf Ghani win the presidential election in one of the most corrupt election in the history of mankind. And that Ashraf Ghani from the beginning was saying that he will support Taliban. Please listen to this. This is an interview that he did almost one and a half year ago with Voice of America. Mukbayat de Madarisu, 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 the Munazamu Madarisu, the Maujud, the Paradil Tapangawaj. Say Muk, Taliban, much more Nisi, Gawadi Wadu Talarsi. Do you know what he says? He says that we need to bring the madrasas in Afghanistan. And do you know what madrasa means in Pakistan and Afghanistan today? That's a training camp. We send kids from this side and then they graduate as professional killers from the other side. Please listen to this Al Jazeera report. <laughs> Jihad. Jihad. 
Ce tarde pe ce șircă o cupără o pietnă ce ne-am dat pe jihan că pati nici... Today, under Ashravghani's umbrella in Afghanistan, which is living under the umbrella of your government, we have thousands of madrasas. Those madrasas train even girls by thousands. So if you really wanted to help Muslims, instead of just saying a few good words, you could do some good work there. Today, some people in America scare Muslims that Donald Trump is another Hitler, another Mussolini. He is a fascist. Hitler was a fascist. Mussolini was a fascist because they were doing, they were acting. But Donald Trump is reacting. Anyone reacting to crimes cannot be fascist. He doesn't say we have a Muslim problem just because he hates us. He says it because we have a problem. Mr. Obama, if the San Bernardino incident it repeats itself again and again, people will fed up. They will stand up. They will not wait for the government. Then they go to Muslim houses and they start killing them. They will start burning our mosques. Then before reaching that point, let's do something to prevent that. Donald Trump says that we need to label and monitor Muslims. It's embarrassing. It would be embarrassing for me as Muslim. But if that keeps our country safe, let's do it. I will be the first one, voluntarily I come, a stamp on my forehead, Muslim, on my right cheek, Shafi, on my left cheek, Ayar. And whatever else, write it in a booklet and hang it on my neck. I doubt if we need to go this route. There are easier ways and we Muslims can help you to achieve that. But if that's the only way, then let's do it. As you say, majority of Muslims, we're good people. We're not scared of being labeled and monitored. Go ahead, do it. You will not find anything. But at the end, you may succeed to find those bad ones. Separate them. Then we will have good sleep too. At this moment, each time someone take a gun and shoot other people in the name of God, in the name of Allah, in the name of Islam, believe me, it's really painful and embarrassing to all of us. It's not that we don't care. And also we are scared about it too. Please listen to the 17 years old Australian kid. This message I deliver to you, the people of America. I deliver this message to you, the people of Britain. And I deliver this message to you, especially the people of Australia. And I say this about your coalition. You threaten us with this coalition of countries. Bring every nation that you wish to us. Bring every nation that you want to come and fight us. It means nothing to us. Whether it's 50 nations or 50,000 nations, it means nothing to us. Bring your planes. Bring everything you want to us. Because it will not harm us. Why? Because we have Allah And this is something that you do not have. To the leaders, to Obama, the Tony Abbott, I say this. These weapons that we have, these soldiers, we will not stop fighting, we will not put down our weapons until we reach your land, until we reach your lands, until we take the head of every tyrant, until we take the head of every tyrant, and until the black flag is flying high in every single land, until we put the black flag on top of Buckingham Palace, until we put the black flag on top of the White House, we will not stop and we will keep on... F he was incubated in Australia. He came there just like me as an immigrant. He was given all the rights, just like an Australian. Where did he go to learn these things? In that local mosque. And in that local mosque, there are tablighis. Some Muslim scholars, they come from Saudi and from Pakistan and give speeches and change their mind. They teach hatred in these lo local mosques. Not in all of them, but a few of them, and that is good enough to produce these people. Look at this clip. 500 of these extremists were incubated in Britain, in London, and they were all sent to Syria to help their brothers, the killers, ISIS. Around 500 Britons are believed to have travelled to Syria to fight against President Assad's forces. Earlier this year, Abdul Wahid Majid from Crawley became the first British suicide bomber to stage an attack in the country. Do you know Mr. Obama why? Because nobody is monitoring them.
the Muslim community can help. We want to help, but we are disappointed. I have a very successful Afghani talk show in one of the Afghan international TVs. My show is the most viewed and the most popular show. People are calling me and they complain about the way FBI and Homeland Security look at our mosques issues, our mosques problems. Hundreds of people are calling them and reporting that these mosques are teaching hatred which is going to create incidents like San Bernardino but they were told that San we have freedom of speech in this country that freedom of speech needs to be adjusted especially for the people that they come in this country and they don't know what freedom of speech is they never had freedom of speech in their countries when they come in here there should be a gracing period Donald Trump I agree with you, we have a Muslim problem in this country. I know the depth of that problem. At one time I was bragging and I was saying that I even know the cure for this problem and I even have the vaccine for this problem. Shafi Ayar, until next time when we see each other. Seriously verify with us rather than show an ugly face and be angry with us. You may ask where they were incubated. I am telling you, in those local mosques, behind your homes. No, I am not saying that all the mosques produce these people. And I am not saying that all clerics are doing this kind of job. We have good mosques and bad mosques. But the thing is, we are not monitoring the mosques. We don't know which one is the good one to be rewarded and which one is the devil one to be punished. Yes, Mr. Trump, we have Muslim problem, not only in America, but in Europe and all over the world. I'm not sure even if you know the depth of this problem. I do. I'm a Muslim scholar. I studied Quran for 12 years. I studied the history of Islam. And since I was 17, I was involved in the politics of Afghanistan. I was even imprisoned for five years during the Russians. Always since 17 years old, I was involved in the politics of Afghanistan, which covers the big part of the politics of Islam. I am an expert. ISIL want. That too is what groups like ISIL want. That too is what groups like ISIL want. ISIL does not speak for Islam. They are thugs and killers. ISIL does not speak for Islam. They are thugs and killers, part of a cult of death. And they account for a tiny fraction of a more than a billion Muslims around the world, including millions of patriotic Muslim Americans who reject their hateful ideology. Moreover, the vast majority of terrorist victims around the world are Muslim. If we're to succeed in defeating terrorism, we must enlist Muslim communities as some of our strongest allies, rather than push them away through suspicion and hate. But what is the difference, according to Ms. Clinton and Mr. Obama, is still there is two categories of Muslims, a majority of good Muslims, a minority of bad. We have to go after the bad ones. In the case of Mr. Trump, is the same thing. He says we have Muslim problem, but then he explains himself. Riley, actually, there's a Muslim problem right. in this world. Riley, actually, there's a Muslim problem right. in this world. Wait. But after all, I'm a Muslim. Do you know what he says about us? Please. Well, you said one time in an interview that there, and just recently, that there's a, there's a, he said on O'Reilly actually, there's a Muslim problem right. in this world. What, what do you mean by that exactly? Well, Bill O'Reilly asked me, is there a Muslim problem? And I said, absolutely yes. Is there a Muslim problem? And I said, absolutely yes. Mr. Trump, although I disagree with your hair, but on this issue, I agree with you 100%. Yes, we have Muslim problem in this country. If this is not a Muslim problem, then what is this? This is Germany. <laughs>
لن تنور هذه القصة بسلام لذلك نقول لهم اذهبوا إلى دياركم وابقوا في دياركم ولا تسكوا رسولنا إن رسولنا خط أحمر كما قلت قفوا عند حدكم قفوا عند حدكم ولا تستمروا إذا تركتمونا نترككم وإن عدتم فنعوا وإن عدتم فنعوا لذلك نقول لكم Look at this. This is Britain. The extremist group are in breach of anti-terror laws. The leaf. I know the depth of this problem. This is ocean deep. Donald Trump. At this moment, I tell you, at least 90% of Muslims, they are against you because we don't want anyone to say we have Muslim problem. But deep inside, even we know, 90% of us, we know that we have Muslim problem. Let's be clear, though. Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. The obsession in some quarters with a clash of civilization or repeating the specific words radical, Islamic, terrorism isn't just a distraction. It gives these criminals, these murderers, it gives these criminals, these murderers, it gives these criminals, these murderers, more standing than they deserve. It actually plays into their hands by alienating partners we need by our side. We love to listen to Mr. Obama. We cannot turn against one another by letting this fight be defined as a war between America and Islam. That too is what groups like that are believed to have been distributed by radical students looking to gain support for the Islamic State, formerly known as ISIS, which is fighting a brutal war to control areas of Syria and Iraq. Now, this is a copy of one of those. Now, in it, it makes recommendations for Muslim men. Among those are migrating from the UK to the Caliphate and obeying the leader of the Islamic State. <laughs> We are here merely saying to you, look, there's a better way of life. You do not need, need to live like animals, following your own desires. The big industries you see nowadays in the West are things like gambling, pornography, alcohol, drugs, you know, homosexuality. If, well, you, took mankind, over, if you took over Britain, you'd ban alcohol? Of course, alcohol will be banned. Drugs will be banned. Pornography will be banned. Gambling will be banned. But the, the money saved, the queen? there we no monarchy. Planning uh, any kind of operations. If we were doing so, you would not see us out of the public. But that does not mean that we do not believe in the eradication of man-made law and supremacy and sovereignty only for God. And the way the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, eradicated the non-Islamic law from the Arabian Peninsula, we hope one day to eradicate the Islamic law from Britain and with the generations to come from the rest of the world to fulfill the prophecy of the Prophet that the whole of the world will one day be under the authority of the Muslims. First of all, I believe that the British people, uh, they are very ignorant of, about the fact what is happening abroad, even about Sheikh Osama. If they came to